Hey guys, so here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to my Game of Thrones talk video. Um, so this is on the second channel, and we're going to just talk about Game of Thrones, the series. You know, the finale just happened, the final episode. And uh, yeah, I made notes last night in bed. I literally went to bed at 5am, you know, the show finished at half past three in the morning. I just couldn't really fall asleep. I was just thinking about it. Um, so I just like started to watch other YouTube videos, and by the time, you know, I noticed it was 5am. Luckily, I'm having today off, technically, though. Right, so I've got notes, just so I can kind of keep my track of thought. Also, there's a lot of construction work happening again outside. Hopefully, you don't hear that, but I definitely do. So if occasionally I lose my track of thought, it's probably because I'm getting distracted by that. So, um, the first thing I think we'll get into is just a very, very brief... If you've never even seen Game of Thrones that you clicked on this video, would I recommend watching the show? And the answer to that is yes. Um, no matter what people say, like, and you hear over the next coming weeks, months, people being angry, it's still likely the best TV show of its kind ever made. Um, I know a lot of people compare it to Breaking Bad. To me, there's not a true comparison there. Like, Breaking Bad is about a maths teacher in modern day making meth. And then you've got Game of Thrones, which is a epic fantasy, crazy drama battle series. So, they're not really on the same plane. Um... If you, if you like modern day dramas, you'll like Breaking Bad. If you don't, you won't like it. So I, I would still recommend you to watch it. Um, it does have its moments. It does have its high moments. It does have some low moments. But that's like any TV show. That's like League of Legends as a game. It has high and low moments. That's like life. Um, so I very much still would recommend people to watch it. And it is still my favorite TV show there's ever been. You know, flat out, it definitely is. You know, Breaking Bad, if people did make that comparison... Breaking Bad's not probably even in my top five. I've watched Breaking Bad, I think, twice the whole way through. It's okay. It's just really grim and depressing, though. Like, it's just kind of meh. Um, I watch TV and shows for different reasons than what Breaking Bad gives me. But anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the final episode. Uh, and then we'll talk about Game of Thrones as a whole. So spoiler warning if you've not watched or you're not caught up. Or, if, you know, you might not care. Um, so the final episode, let me get my notes. Uh, overall, I was relatively satisfied with the episode, considering, and the way that I worded it on Twitter, considering the season that we had of not a great season, I think it's the best ending we could have hoped for. Um, it kind of w went back to kind of to its Game of Thrones roots of talking and the character moments, which I think a lot of us were missing, and I think that's the problem that season eight, uh, nine had? Nine? Eight? Whatever it was, eight? Um, was... Because they only had six episodes, they had to rush through the season. So we lost a lot of the like little character moments that made the show great. Uh, it wasn't the big battles in the early seasons, because there was hardly any big battles in the early seasons that made the show amazing. It was the characters. That's what drew you in. And we lost that a little bit. But this episode, I do think we kind of went back to it uh, relatively. So uh, some of it, I think, was predict like you know relatively easy to predict um i think the season as a whole has been relatively easy to predict if i'm honest the one thing that i didn't see coming was bran being the guy on the throne um i yeah I, I did not at all see that coming um again i know there's been the occasional leaks of what people somehow um i avoided all of them luckily so that was a bit of a surprise to me um you know i i kind of thought there wasn't going to be a throne anymore which in in kind of you know, there, there kind of isn't a throne anymore because uh, Drogon burnt it, which I did find a little bit weird. You know, that dragon just sees his mother, I guess, die, and his reaction is to burn a chair, not burn the guy that did it. I found that weird, and you know, in me and my dad, he's a massive Game of Thrones fan as well. Surprisingly, for like a fifty-six, seven-year-old man, he loves it. And he's been a bit disappointed with this season. And he, we, we've been kind of discussing. My, my dad thought Danny was going to stay on the throne. I was like, no, she has to die. But my the, the tripping point that I always had in my head was, how the hell do they deal with the dragon? Um, you know, you kill Daenerys, then you have a dragon going nuts again. I, then I thought that's where Bran would come in and he would walk into the dragon and just make it pile into the ground or something, pile into the ocean. It just flew away. It just took her and flew away. So that's a thing, you know, who knows? Um... That was a bit odd to me. Another thing that I found odd within Bran becoming the king, the North going separate. To me, that makes absolutely zero sense when the guy on the throne is a Northman, is a Stark. To me, what that more is, I actually really started to dislike Sansa's character, especially in the last season. 
Um, I think they were trying to parallel her to Cersei nearing the end and Littlefinger obviously becoming that type of character, you know, backstabbing and being in the back and, you know, very open about disliking and all that type of thing. I think that was just a open thing of going, she just wants power. You know, that's that's a whole thing, you know, from episode one of the se season one, she wanted to be this princess and be the ruler of King's Landing. You'll get married to, you know, Joffrey. She's always wanted that. And I think she's having a hard time not having any power. When John was King of the North, she was undermining him in that little council meeting when they were voting for the king. You could, like, when she was saying, sit down, uncle, you know that she was, pe she wanted people to go, Sansa, let it be you. And then when it was like, Bran, you, you know, good acting, I guess, you could see her reaction was not happy. So again, I'm not convinced about that because, you know, why do you have a separate North when your guy on the throne is a Stark? And obviously, yeah, he's a bit of a weird dude, but he is still a Stark. Um, you know, the actual of him being on the throne, I don't mind as such. You know, if you want to talk about qualifications, he knows a lot, which does help when you're leading, it will, ruling. He knows the future, I guess. You know, it's been hinted he knows the future um, because he said, you know, why do you think I'm here? When, um, you know, if, if he accepted the throne, if they voted for him, but uh, he's n in the in the whole show. He's never shown leadership capabilities at all. None. If there's that one moment you can recall and kind of go, oh yeah, that moment he kind of you know led N didn't happen. You know, there's no inkling to him being a good ruler other than knowing stuff. And maybe that's why he chose Tyrion as his hand because Tyrion does have that ca like quality. You know, he's made mistakes, and the main mistakes that he's been making over the last year or two has been him inner fighting with like you know protect his family's name. And maybe he's starting to see Daenerys turn. Uh, obviously, he made the mistake of, you know, ratting out Varys because Varys was correct in the end. Um, but yeah, like, I'm, I'm OK with him being king. I just find it a bit weird, especially that the North is now separate because a Stark's on the throne. You know, how are they separate in that regard? I think it's just like when it was you know, the, the line that Sansa said was Northmen would have never accept, a, you know, bend the knee again. But it's a Stark. They're not bending the knee. They already are a Stark. They're already Stark bannermen. They, they, they don't have to bend again. So to me, that was just kind of like Danny, um, Sansa being power hungry, I guess. Um, other things. <clears throat> so one thing that I kind of, um, well, I think everyone noticed is that the Stark children, uh, if you want to call it that, if you want to include Jon, you've now got them like all powerful, basically. So, you know, a lot of people expected Game of Thrones to end on a down note, but you've got Jon, who is king north of the wall. You've got Sansa, queen of the north. You've got Bran, the broken, king of the seven, uh, six kingdoms. And then you've got Aya doing whatever she's doing, you know, the conqueror or whatever, like wh wherever she's going to go. So there's, there's a Stark children, and I guess one Targaryen, uh, made it up pretty good of the Game of Thrones. Um, you know, they're all in positions of relative power. You know, I guess Arya is a captain of a ship. Yeah, but uh, And, you know, I did also predict that Jon was going to go north of the wall. Uh, I said to my dad, it was hinted too hard for him not to at the end. When Tormund, a few episodes ago, said, you know, you belong in the north. And he let he let Ghost go north too. I was like, Jon's ending up in the north. I, I didn't know how he was going to. I didn't know if he would kill... I, I definitely knew he was going to kill Daenerys. Like, in me, I was like, that's just going to happen. Jon can't live with knowing that she can do that. You know, she can kill millions. I didn't know how he'd get there. I thought, you know, he might just, like, kill her and say, I'm going north myself. But he got, obviously, banished there. And I think he was fine with that. Like, he'd obviously showed some discomfort in some regards. But I think, you know, when he was riding right at the end of the episode, you could maybe have a little hint of a smirk. I think that's where he wanted to be. So uh, I think that's fine. And, you know, some people have said, you know, League of, um, is it a game of spin-offs? You know, <clears throat> they have announced they're doing four shows. One of them is a sequel, but I don't think they've announced the other three. Well, you've just been given the other three, technically. You've just been given Jon's series North of the Wall, if you wanted it. You've just been given Arya Sirius going west of Westeros. And then the final one can be either a Sansa or a Bran actually ruling the Six Kingdoms or ruling the North. You've got series if you really wanted them um which i'm not sure if they'll do that i don't i don't know if like kit harrington would want to continue playing the character but um you know there have been some of the actors showing some distaste for how the series has ended I, there is very very you know open reports that you know kit harrington was very disappointed how the night king died um because his character was always building up to kill the night king and obviously didn't even fight him um so yeah other things um 
let's see. Oh, John, I, I liked um, earlier in the episode when John is talking to Tyrion, he quotes Master Aemon. Uh, if you guys remember, Master Aemon was part of the Night's Watch and he was a lone Targaryen. I don't remember as... I think he was the... the, the I think he's technically the uh, crazy Mad King's brother. So that would have been John's uncle, I think? Or something like... No, granddad? Something like that. Um, I think it's uncle or granddad. And... Yeah. Um, he parallels him now. Kind of. Um, Master Aemon was a Targaryen, banished to the Wall, and always said, you know, it's a dangerous thing, a lone Targaryen in the world. What is John now? You know, John is a lone Targaryen in the world. He is the last one left. They, you know, in the books, there is a whole other line of Targaryens that the show never um, went into. It's like the, 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 the bastard versions of Targaryens made their own house, and they're actually a pretty powerful force, I think, in Essos or something like that. They never got into those. Um, so, you know, one of the spin-offs could be that. But John, as a true tra Targaryen, technically, he is the last one left. So, you know, is he going to be okay? A lone Targaryen is a dangerous thing to the world. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. Again, I'm relatively happy with the, with the end. You know, if what I say a lot of people like are disliking about the episode from what I've seen is not a dislike of the end episode. I think it's more of a dislike that they, you know, haven't liked the season as a whole. But I think the end episode is relatively solid. If we had an amazing season, but this was the exact episode we got at the end, I think people would be fine with it, um, if I'm honest. Uh, now moving... So yeah, just thoughts on the last episode. I'll be definitely watching it again either tonight or tomorrow. But I'm, I'm fine with it. It's good. Um, I would have liked one thing with season eight as a whole. I definitely think they should have done more episodes. I think everybody is in agreement to that. And it was obviously D&D &D turning that down. We did find out that they were offered 10 episodes and they said, we'll do it in six. Even if they did it in eight to give us more character moments, to show us the turn of Daenerys even more. Because it was pretty, it's, it's a hard thing to swallow that she's just fought in the north and saved mankind and then supposedly the next thing she does is go down to the south and burn millions of people thousands of people that's a hard thing to take there needed to be something in the middle there that showed something even more happening and i know obviously she lost a lot she lost jorah she lost you know her advisors was conspiring against her she lost miss sunday but and she lost dragons but it's very very quick and i i do know you know, people have shown quotes that, you know, I I'm completely fine with Daenerys becoming evil. I think that's the way that the show was always going to go. And when people were naming their kids after it, oh man, I got a laugh after that. Like, literally back then I was like, they shouldn't be doing that. You know, there's so many hints of her becoming evil in even the early seasons. Um, she burnt people like crazy, but the only thing it was, they were, she was burning evil people. So everyone's like, oh yeah, she's the good guy. But that was that's easily flipped. When her perspective is justice, she can burn anyone. To her, it's justice. To others, it's crazy. Um, and I think that's what the Targaryens sometimes have in them. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, if we go into now Game of Thrones as a whole, my favourite things, my least favourite things. <clears throat> so I'll do my least favourite things first. And then we'll, we'll end with the favourite things. So the least favourite things, Bran... His whole story, I don't like. Again, I'm okay with him ending up on the throne, I guess, because who else would have it been? Um, and it's an interesting twist. You know, he knows everything, so he should lead well. Um, but the whole story was pointless to me. There was no big payoff. There was nothing about, you know, that made it matter. Um, I always thought there was going to be something like, you know, a conversation. Another point that we're going to say is that the Night King's payoff was bad. I think those stories, brands and the Night King stories are parallel and there's no payoff with either the, either of them. Um, we don't exactly know why. You know, there, there's obviously... They say in the show that, oh, he's trying to erase human knowledge and all that. Okay, but, like, nothing. No conversation. Nothing to learn. No Bran warging to talk to him if he can't talk. Nothing. Uh, I just didn't think that was satisfying. And, it, you know, that story had really high ups. You know, the, the Hodor moment, I thought, was one of the best moments in the show. Um, but it just didn't pay off for me and maybe it's not supposed to maybe game of thrones and the books again then they're, they're not fairy tale stories they're kind of like real life merged with fantasy and sometimes that isn't satisfying so maybe that's the point um but yeah i just wasn't a fan of the brand payoff overall uh, the night king we just mentioned i wasn't a fan of the night king you know the dude's eight thousand years old uh and he lost his first battle um 
and you know it, it just was weird to me like again he showed emotions when he gets burnt by daenerys he smiles when he's walking up to bran really like you know cockily is that a word and like thinks he's already won and then lets his guard down and gets stabbed by aya <sighs> like i'm okay with aya killing him i just think it could have been done in a better way and there should have been a better confrontation you know my suggestion we said it when in the driving video a few weeks ago have um john make it to the night king you know somehow um with um greyjoy what Th uh, theon greyjoy fighting him under the tree theon dies john intervenes before it can get to bran and they're having a fight john is definitely losing maybe there is some conversation happening but then aya comes from the tree above to kill the night king i think that would have made more sense of her literally coming from nowhere and i know i guess that's the point of aya but but still it just didn't just didn't land for me as much as i would like it to but i'm fine with Aya getting the kill i just don't like the execution um next thing is cersei in season eight i think lena headley playing cersei was one of the best performances the show had you know you actually hated her like joffrey everyone hated joffrey so much so the the actor who played joffrey quit pl acting because everyone just hated him uh, which is shows of a good actor um but cersei i think was great throughout the, the the seasons you generally like was like damn you are evil season eight i wasn't a fan of what she did she, you know she stood on high ground pretty much every single episode looked down and just said a few words there was no action to what she was doing there was nothing she was basically in three locations the whole season and i think that's just a waste uh, you know again her end of her and jamie i guess you know uh, i was okay okay with it but again is that satisfying you know should it, again there be more of a conversation you know the the performance that Tyrion gave or peter dinklage gave when he found his family i think was crazy good um but it did have some holes in it you know when we were watching that episode before and the whole roof appeared to cave down apparently not apparently if they just were 10 feet left of where they died they would have been completely fine so th that's a bit weird to me um you know if instead of holding each other you know jamie was looking at where everything's falling and they just run they might have easily survived that so it's questionable um so yeah i just wasn't a fan of um her in season eight jamie um i was a fan of and not a fan of at the same time i i, I don't know if i buy him going back to cersei and some people go but that is him i guess maybe but like he's had so many years of like doing better things and redeeming himself in many ways that i just found it weird him going back to the thing that he knows is evil um and maybe that's like his his thing and maybe people are like yeah that's just his curse but i just didn't buy it fully again maybe it just needed one more episode of him kind of realizing that instead of having one conversational Brienne and then leaving. Maybe it needed more. Again, more episodes would have gave, given us more of those character moments that I think we were missing. Um, and that's, that's about that, what I did like generally dislike from the top of my head. Uh, next, we go into the things that I liked. So favorite moments and favorite characters. So favorite characters, um, the Hound. I think that character was fantastic throughout the seasons. You know, at the beginning, you're just thinking he's a, you know, fighty oaf that is scary is a good fighter is a guard and he has this whole crazy arc of like not bowing down to the throne anymore he's no longer really a, well i guess he's still technically a knight but you know he's betrayed his king technically and then it's about a survival about overcoming his fear of fire and becoming really a father figure to aya um you know she was always a fighty stark you know she never wanted to do the lady things and the hound kind of embraced that he he helped her with that and i think you know their moment where they say goodbye in the map room was a good moment i think it did need a little bit you know a minute or two more more conversation but i i think the hound was a great character and i do think it part of his to the performance i think it was very good and his end i think was fine uh Clegane bowl it happened and again it happened more for the audience than it did the actual show um you know but that's fine with me and i think it's he went out in fire you know throwing himself and his brother over the edge so yeah hound really good character to me i liked it quite a bit um other favorite characters aya aya was interesting um you know there were some twists that i didn't expect with the character um there were some moments that i was expecting her to do more if that makes sense you know in season the last season i don't think she used her facelessness once she used her stealth capabilities several times 
but she never used her facelessness um which I think maybe that would have been more satisfying. Maybe killing the Night King and she had a White Walker's face on. I don't know. But yeah, like I, she was a cool character though. And um, yeah, I, I again, the only thing that I hope is the, the child actors now, obviously adults who are from Game of Thrones, I hope they don't fall into the trap of some of the Harry Potter cast that they don't get any big work anymore because like Kit Harrington is Jon Snow. Maisie Williams is Aya. Will they continue being, you know, will they continue work? Because I think some of their performances that they've done in other roles haven't gone well. You know, uh, Kit Harrington with Pompeii, that bombed. Um, Amelia Clark with um, Han Solo, bombed. With um, Terminator, bombed. So there, there hasn't been a great track record. I guess you've got the um, Sansa person doing the Jean Grey performance in X-Men, which doesn't look great. So I, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, other characters that I liked... Um, or Tyrion. Uh, I do like Tyrion, but, you know, his character was definitely dumbed down in the last year or so. And obviously the, the, the classic thing people have said is a character can only be as smart as his writers. Obviously, George R.R. R. Martin for writing all this originally, very smart dude. D&D, &D, again, smart writers. They did a really good job in the most part, but not as smart as, as George R.R. R. Martin. So they couldn't make his Tyrion as smart. Um... You know, it's not just the mistakes. The mistakes you can accept because he's fighting within himself. It's just even just his voice and the way he's saying just wasn't as eloquent or eloquent as he used to say. Um, other than that, you know, John's character, I liked it, but it didn't change. Like, that's the thing. John's character is the same from episode one of season one than it basically is in the last episode. And I think they actually highlighted that by his hair in the last episode. He let it go a little bit longer, curlier, when he was in that jail cell for a few weeks. He looks almost identical to what he did all the way back when, with his black cloak and everything. And I think that was on purpose. It's to show that he he's in his place. He's He started here in episode... I think it was episode two that he arrived in, in Night's Watch all the way in season one. And he's back there now. And obviously he's going even more north. But he's he kind of belongs where he started. Um, and I thought that was fine. Um, I don't actually know... Oh, no, he does have long claw. I'm pretty sure because they showed the whole like montage of Aya putting needle, John putting long claw. So um, yeah, I'm fine with John. Other things again, I'm missing things out. Obviously, oh Varus, I thought was a cool character. Um, you know, my some people didn't like him. I my dad didn't like him. I thought Varus as the person that was doing everything to protect the masses of people. Um, obviously not in a very open way. He was the the master of whisperers, but. I liked his character. I think he was a, a good addition to the show. Like Littlefinger was good addition to the show. And it, I think a lot of it does come from the performances they were given. Um, the council meeting at the end, I thought was quite fitting, I'd say. You know, Pod is now a knight or Sir Pod, which I was like, hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the people that they got obviously are a little just like nods to people. So Bronn, Master of Coin, is, you know, it, his whole thing does come to the close of he is the Master of Highgarden, which... I didn't even think they would give that to him, but okay. Then you've got, you know, Brienne, you've got Sir Davos, and you've got um, Sam, Samwell. And so, yeah, it's like a little nod to those other people throughout the show that, you know, they do represent their kind of things that they do. Bra Bra Bronn is all about coin. Uh, Tyrion is, is generally a good hand, you know. Um, you know, so Davos is a good ship master and smuggler. Um, Samwell obviously has showed himself to be a great uh, maester. And I don't know what Brienne's was, because they did say they need a Master of War. So I actually don't... Oh, she might be the head of the Kingsguard, maybe. Maybe that's what she is. Um, or Qu Queen... King Kingsguard, yeah. Uh, maybe that's what she is, because I think they said they're missing two roles. One was a Master of War, and one was something else. And obviously Brienne, I would have thought, would be the Master of War, but apparently not. Um, another character I will say just came to my head that annoyed me, but I think it's supposed to, is Grey Worm. Oh, I don't know if it was the performance the actor was given, but like that was annoying me near the end of the season. He just became the mindless zombie killer again, which I guess he's supposed to after Miss Sunday dies. But um, I was expecting him to die, but he didn't. Um, and then they're just sailing off to Narth, where he promised he'll take Miss Sunday. So you're going to have a bunch of um, Unsullied arriving on a beach in Narth, which, are, you know, okay... Um, it's a bit weird. Another thing that I did think at right at the end, you know, John is forbidden to come back. Says who? 
you know that's one thing i did think if if there's unsullied are leaving why was that like a sentence that everyone had to take fully serious you know the king is a stark he could have been pardoned and the guys that are like no he has to have punishment are leaving so they wouldn't even know that's one thing that also i just didn't really connect i know john wants to kind of be there but they literally could have in the show or like there could have been a line saying you're sentenced to the north but you can come back in a couple weeks but they don't even say that you know it was more like you can come visit me and i is like no i'm not i'm not returning um and obviously they said you know john can't father anybody again says who he's now north of the wall there's no rules up there so again definitely could be a spin-off series if kit harrington wanted to do that if the actors are up for it if they want to continue that story i i don't think they will i think they are done with this specific story but they definitely did leave it open to to you know gamer spin-offs definitely so overall, I'm pretty happy with the show. Um, you know, I I generally give the show probably a 8.5 out of 10. Final season, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Other seasons were, you know, the 8s, the 9s, etc. So pretty still solid. And, it you know, the, the final season definitely hasn't ruined my thoughts. You know, this is the ending that we were getting. You know, a lot of people saying they need to rewrite it. Obviously, the writing isn't great, so I don't know if people are happy, unhappy with how it's gone. Like the actual actions in the show, because those are the actions that are going to happen in the book. You know, that that's the thing. So Daenerys does go mad. Jon does go north of the wall. Bran does become king. Sansa does become queen of the north. Those happen with George R. R. Martin. And I think it's just the execution that some people are unhappy with, which again, I does I I do think. Um, I do think does come from the number of episodes that we were given. Again, I hope the rumours aren't fully true, that people are saying the reason why they only did six episodes is because they get the same amount of money doing six or ten, so why did they, why would they do more? And also, obviously, they've been given a Star Wars trilogy, those two writers, so they're like, we need to finish Game of Thrones to start the Star Wars trilogy uh, writing it. I hope that's not fully true. But um, yeah, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy my little talk about Game of Thrones, throw a like on the video, comment down below what you think. And uh, I'll be interested to know because, you know, if you're one of those people that are very angry, I'd say maybe have a bit of perspective that it's just a TV show. It's, it's not that important. Um, but yeah, you always can revisit it. You always can watch the episodes now that you've loved for years. That's never going to go away, which is kind of cool. And now really you know we've got the spin-offs that are going to be happening which again i'm looking forward to but the, the next big thing that i'm looking forward to in this kind of genre because it is my favorite favorite genre fantasy medieval is the lord of the Rings series with amazon that is the next thing that i'm like please be good you know even if it's just the same quality as game of thrones but it's set in middle earth cool great i'm in but um yeah that's gonna be it like subscribe comment down below see you guys next time